that, that, that might be completely rebuilding. At this point, it's just at the head coach position. Quinn Snyder stepping down. They're looking for a new one. Bill, there are reports that they have gotten trade calls for Donovan Mitchell, but they don't want to hear any of those calls as of now. What's going on? Yeah, so I, the same sources that told me that um, that Quinn Snyder would not be the head coach a few months ago told me Quinn Snyder would not be the head coach when we got to this point of the year around the NBA had no idea. And those that I've reached back out to still don't know what Danny Ainge is thinking. He's now in charge of basketball operations as it relates to, to Donovan Mitchell. The smart play guys, and what I imagine is going on, is, is that Danny wants to rebuild that entire organization. We've seen him in Boston, his ability to draft properly and make the kind of decisions that can build a winner in the long term. Give all the credit in the world to Brad Stevens and he made Odoka for the fact the Celtics are in the NBA Finals, but it's it's Danny Ainge who put that team together. But it's all well and good to, to decide you want Donovan Mitchell there and to move all the other pieces and maybe have a couple years of transition. We're in an era of player power where if Donovan Mitchell doesn't want to do that, doesn't feel like, like Ainge is his guy, or is frustrated and put out that Quinn Snyder's not there, and I have heard, and there's been several reports that that is the case, I think there's certainly a situation where we've seen this. Donovan Mitchell could just decide quietly or otherwise to try and force his, his way somewhere else. So the teams that I've talked to that have an interest in Donovan Mitchell don't know whether or not he's available. Tell me he's not available now, but are holding out hope that there might be some movement if Donovan Mitchell gets frustrated enough that he goes to Ainge and says, I don't want to be a part of whatever rebuild without Quinn Snyder, you are or aren't planning. So, let's just pretend like he is available and the Jazz are listening. Colin, put together a trade proposal for Donovan Mitchell and where would he end up? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I got on the trade machine and, and did whatever I could do, work some magic. And to me, I think a spot that makes a lot of sense for him is the Knicks. This is a team uh, that has been talked about around Donovan Mitchell for a while, ever since Utah's kind of discontent has come up. And for the Knicks, if they're going to be able to get a player of Donovan Mitchell's caliber, an all-NBA, you know, all-star level player in his prime, uh, they're going to have to give up a lot. So I think the trade package is going to have to be centered around, you know, some three future first-round picks. You could do 2023, 2025, and 2027. That's a huge haul. And then a couple of interesting young players in Emmanuel Quickly and Obi Toppin, and then some salary filler in Alec Burks and Nerlens Noel. Uh, that, that math works out. I think, you know, it seems really hefty if you're a Knicks fan, but this is a team that, you know, last season was a, a giant disappointment. They had looked like they had made some progress the season before, and then they went backwards. You're looking at that roster and saying, which one of these players is going to lead me to a championship? Maybe R.J. Barrett? Uh, maybe. So if you can get a guy like Donovan Mitchell and not have to give up a guy like Barrett, I think uh, that's something that they would certainly have to look into if Donovan Mitchell decides that he no longer wants to be in Utah. Yeah, in no secret, Donovan Mitchell would like to be a New York Knick or certainly enticed by the idea. I just, I, I'm skeptical that Danny Ainge would be willing to, to make that trade, guys, in large part because it's one thing to have Ainge come in, he's going to build a winner. It's another thing to tear down a team that has been very successful in the regular season and convince ownership, and I don't know what conversations they've had. We're going to go from that to a complete complete start over. We are not going to have any competitiveness at all. And, that, and that's what it is if you're trading for, for those picks. It, it's certainly in the realm of what's possible. I, I'm not sure personally, and I don't know how Danny Ainge evaluates those players. I, I don't know if the Knicks have enough. Uh, a, a scenario that was thrown out to me that kind of raised my eyebrows from an NBA source that I thought was interesting was Daryl Morey and, and that Sixers team because Daryl likes to go big game hunting. I know it doesn't necessarily feel like a, a fit necessarily with James Harden, but the idea that you could move on from Tobias Harris and he has some value and that he would leverage because we've seen Daryl do this before whatever he has to just pack a bunch of stars I think is interesting and, and I think the Miami Heat are a fascinating possibility they've, they've got some young players we know Pat Riley even though they've done better in the draft the last few years doesn't value draft picks the way that most other organizations do now Miami Heat draft picks aren't going to be as valuable because presumably they're going to be a pretty good team whereas the Knicks probably aren't going to be so e even with Mitchell so we'll, we'll see but I, you know, I think uh, again I think for the New York Knicks I think it's a really hard thing to pull off and if Donovan Mitchell becomes available He'll have a lot of say in that, but I think it has to be a massive, massive return in Utah, a, a overwhelming return for that to happen. And as of right now, uh, Utah not listening to trade offers, but as we know, there's a price for just about everybody, especially in the NBA right now, especially for a team that's looking to get over the hump and starting over with a new head coach. Fellas, stick around. We're coming right back to you in just a couple of minutes. The NBA draft is just a couple of weeks away now, and then free agency beginning three weeks from tomorrow. 
June the 30th, July the 1st, Vegas Summer League mid-July, and then training camps begin in September. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.